Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I get to work on a Holy Grail, or a desirable reel, or a legend reel, or whatever we want to call them. This is a Newell reel, and uh, today they're becoming very popular, and they're harder and harder to find because Newell is out of business, and uh, the reel manufacturer is not continued. Uh, this one is the Newell C229-5. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that the uh, case is about the size of a squitter. Uh, it's a graphite case. It's got aluminum spool. Uh, and uh, inside, as you'll see, is going to be high quality stainless gearing. Uh, this one got sent to me uh, by a viewer and uh, asked me to tune it up. So we're going to tune it up and we'll take you inside and we'll show you what this reel is made of. So I'm going to start by removing the handle, which I always do. I have an offset here uh, that seems to fit this. The, um, the handle nut is uh, inside a little bit. There's a recess there, so you, you can't really grab it with a straight up box wrench. And also there's a little plastic uh, shield behind that nut. So uh, it, this one just seems to work, and I've learned over time that, uh, that this is the best tool for the, uh, the work. So here we go. All right, uh, quality, I believe that's a stainless nut. We have a plastic uh, insert there, and then we have a graphite handle, and you just kind of walk this up to get that plastic nut off. And I'm not sure if the handle's gonna come off. Yep, it was. So there is a, uh, an E-clip on here that holds the, uh, the pinion uh, gear shaft to the, um, the back of the bridge, so you wanna make sure you're aware of that. And like anything else, I encourage folks to take pictures along the way. If you're working on a reel you're not familiar with or you haven't done in a while, take pictures like I'm doing here with the video so that you know uh, the sequence of this thing should you get lost. You can always go back and uh, put it out. A lot of folks will uh, take the parts off and lay them down on a, uh, on a workbench or a mat in the sequence that they took them off on. Uh, I've never had that discipline. I'm not going to tell you don't do it. Uh, I find that putting parts into a parts tray, which is what you see me doing here, is better because I don't lose them. Uh, I, I have a terrible habit of brushing my cuffs and shirts and hands and things on my workbench, and from time to time that results in things getting knocked around and lost. All right, I took the tension washer off of the star drag adjuster. I'm going to walk the star drag adjuster back, and then we'll get to the case. So Carl Newell was a uh, plastic engineer out in uh, California. He um, was not an employee of Penn. Every now and then I see the people tell me that uh, Newell worked for Penn. He didn't. Uh, he, he was a Penn Reels enthusiast. He did uh, enjoy fishing with Penn Reels. And uh, from what I understand, he uh, didn't like the weight of them and knew that the uh, the, the reels could be improved by using some of the plastics technologies that he had in his business. And he went about doing just that, designing and improving upon the reel, and uh, eventually building the, uh, the Newell fishing reel line. And uh, as I mentioned, they, I guess they were ahead of their time. Not I guess, I know they were ahead of their time. And a lot of folks uh, treasure them today. Okay, so here's one of the things we're going to notice as we do this. The screw that came out of the side plate here was a long screw. The screw that came out of the top, a short one. So you want to notice the sequence of those as you go about disassembling a reel so that you put them back in the right places. I'm going to assume this is a long screw as well. And uh, so it looks like the long screws go into the crossbars and the short screws into the uh, into that top holder there. Well, that should take the trim ring off. And it should take the side plate off. I don't think that there's another screw uh, there. So let's take that side cap off. And we can remove the plate, remove the spool. And we want to get to the bearing in the back. So think of this as a, pig, a pen jig master kind of a, um, a build. Uh, so one of the improvements is ball bearings on both sides. You can't see it on this one, you will in a moment, but the ball bearings here. So the first thing I like to do when I do these things is test it. I just simply take a Phillips head screwdriver. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I put it inside the bearing, make sure that the bearing turns easily. 
It does. And this is a service of one, it's not a rebuild. So I'm just going to flood that bearing with some oil just to make sure that uh, all of that gets well lubricated. I'm going to put that frame off to the side then. There's nothing else that needs to be done there. And let's come over now. There's four bridge screws here. We're going to go ahead and take them out. They're Phillips head screwdrivers needed. And I have two parts trays here. I don't necessarily need two all the time, but sometimes I like to work exterior parts on one side and inter interior parts on the other. And this is a graphite case, so I, I warn folks with graphite, don't use the power drivers. Uh, I guess on the outbound side, it's not terrible. On the inbound side, you can crack these cases if you put too much torque on them. So uh, as a general rule, one, I like working with my hands to begin with. And uh, as a result, I generally stay away from mechanicals. But if you need them, uh, go ahead and use them. But please be careful on the reinstall on these particularly. Okay, I've just pushed the assembly through. I'm going to remove the side plate then, and then you're going to see the quality that's inside this. I still have the four screws here. I'm going to take them out just to make sure that there's, that there's where the, they are located. And what I found here is, is the same thing I found on the side plate case. And that's that there's two different length screws. The two small ones are going to go up top. That's the top. The two longer ones are going through the case here for the bridge. So I'm going to take those four and put them in. This is a tension washer for the uh, star drag assembly that sits on top here. I didn't pull that through the case. I took that out the other side. But if you're playing along and trying to figure out the details or how this is set up, uh, there you go. I believe all of this in the assembly here now is stainless. Uh, that's part of the quality of the reel. So we have a, uh, a sleeve, a thick gear sleeve on here. We're going to clean that up. It's going to grab some steel wall. I should be able to get that surface corrosion off with that. If you needed to, you could use a polish to, uh, to help with that. This one seems to be cleaning just fine. You could use a polish like a, uh, in this case, this is a turtle wax chrome. It's an automotive polish, but it has enough grit in it that it can help you. And then we have the main assembly. So the new gear, again, I believe all of this is stainless, including the gears. This one is just particularly dry, but other than that, you can see how it works. The, the turn the pinion shaft, it will turn the main gear. The main gear will turn the spool gear. The spool gear intercepts the spool in the back here. There's a ridge on that, and it will go into the ridge as such. And that ridge will then turn main spool. Alright, I'm just going to pull this off. I do believe as a concession here, if you needed drag washers, the drag washers are identical to the Penn Jigmaster drag, drag washers. So you don't have to go searching if you're just going to do a rebuild on that. And here's your drag stack. Remember we took that E-clip off. That enables us to pull the, the gear sleeve. And you want to do that because you want to clear and clean the gear shaft and then we can pull out the drag washers and here's your sequence on the drag washers and these are a hard washer I, I don't think they need to be replaced but this is the same drag washer setup as a pen wheel and I'm just going to step off camera for a moment to see if I can get a, a uh, HT100 drag for that and just compare because I do believe they are the same. Nothing like dead air time. Okay, here is a Penn HT100 drag washer, and the best way to test it is just put it right in, and there you go. So that's the answer. You can change out the drag washers, and we're going to go do that. So uh, these are these are hard. It feels like a leather washer. I'm not quite sure what this is, but why not put the HT100s in and do it to everybody a favor 
uh, as we are rebuilding this. So I'm just going to pause here so that I can go off camera and get the other uh, drag washers and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm returning and thank goodness the furnace is set off because that uh, makes my uh, sound a little bit better there. It's winter time here in the Northeast and this is a great time to go and uh, redo your reels because fishing is slowed and unless you're going down south to do some, uh, some fishing you're not doing much here at the moment. So go ahead and take the time in the uh, winter recess and uh, go ahead and, and redo them. Okay, I did get three of the HT100 drags so we're going to do a little bit of a drag upgrade here. And in order to make these last longer, I like to use Cal's Universal Dry Grease. I use my gloved hand to work the dry grease into the washer. And then I use a paper towel to clear off any excess. And then I seat them. So I'll put that in there. Next up would be a cleaning of the, the metal washers. Make sure that there's, they stay bright and shiny. But, uh, hung up here with the line from the spool and then we just repeat the process. And you can be fancy, you can brush this on, you can do other things, but the protective glove this kind of goes two ways here. It, uh, it actually helps me to be a tool as well. Now I have the eared washer that's always in the middle of the stack and we have the last of the HC100 drags. And I'm going to put that up on top of the pinion and the gear sleeve at the moment just to get these set properly. Probably should have done that from the start. Okay. Last of the flat washers. Just want to make sure that they stay nice and clean. All of the drag washers have been uh, worked on. Now this one's concave, right? It's not a flat washer. It kind of peaks on this side and, and has a recess on this side. Recess side goes down. And then we're going to do the rest of this. We're going to clean the main shaft. We're going to use a real grease here. We're going to use uh, pen precision real grease. A little brush just to make sure that the insides are and clean. I'm also going to take the time to put the real grease onto the spool gear at this point. This reel was a little noisy when it came in and I can see why. I'm also going to put a little bit of real grease onto the shoulders here where that uh, yoke is going to move up and down. All right we'll take the gear assembly and reinstall that. Now we have the anti-reverse. The anti-reverse fl flipped uh, when I pulled the gear shaft off. So you just want to take that out of the way. I'm gonna, that's how it belongs up here. I'm just going to hold that up here while I put the main gear on. I should be able to get these things intersected and done properly. If not, you can always push it up from the inside as you see me doing here. You'll know it's working when you give it a test here. And you can hear it clicking even though the, the main gear isn't moving, the rest of it is. All right, and then we want to make sure we get grease onto the main gear, especially if it was noisy to start with. So let's go put some on there. You don't have to fill it in completely. It'll work its way around over time. All right, and then what we want to do next then is go back and get that E-clip up. Think we can do that at this point. Well, let's let's continue the stack then. We'll put the stack in because this is the way we took it off. Take the stack, take the plate, burring on the inside of the plate. So let's make sure that that gets lubed up. And I use oil on the burrings, and then we can reset the assembly. Nothing fancy about that. The anti-reverse dog, unlike the pens, is not held in with the um, uh, with a side plate screw. So you just have to uh, just line this up, and you're good. 
and I'm just trying to find the other two. There we go. All right, then we'll just tighten them down. I like to go northeast southwest on this. I don't like to tighten in a circular motion because the, uh, it may put pressure on one side or the other. So go cross pattern, do an X. All right, we're tightening down there. And we have the one more. We have that tension ring that came here. And I'm just putting these on and, oops, that's the wrong tension ring. This is the tension ring I want. And that's concave as well. That's going to give you the, the alternating tension on your star drag adjuster. So at this point, I think I can put the the E clip on. I don't remember any issues beyond that. So let's go ahead and put the E clip on. And hold that post onto the or the gear sleeve onto the main shaft. I'm going to use a little bit of a pliers here to snap that ring into place. And now we can go ahead and reinstall the spool. And this is a lightweight spool. So Newell, when he was doing this, was all about the weight, the convenience, and the performance of the reel. And uh, that's why he made some of the changes he did. And having an uh, engineering background and, and being familiar with plastics certainly uh, helped his cause and the design and won him a lot of friends in terms of the uh, performance. So we're just uh, putting some grease on both sides of the spool shaft. Let's make that operate efficiently and install the spool inside the reel now. And when you do that, typically what will happen is the dawn line will come out through there. So just be aware of that as you're trying to set the spool and bring it inside. Uh, this little carpenter's all that I have uh, works in a lot of different ways and that's one of them. And then we can come across here and install the, the side plate. I'm just looking for the, the centering point here. There we go. We're centered. You have to watch this top screw. It's, uh, it's actually backed here. It's a nut. Put it through. It's not part of the case itself. And then we'll go grab those two long screws. Oops, we're going to grab the... This is why parts trays work so well. Uh, you can visually see where you got to go. And uh, before you get ahead of yourself, you can recognize that you, you're missing something there. And again, of course, if you if you really got flummoxed, how do you like that? I don't think I've used that word in a while. If you've gotten flummoxed by uh, the reassembly, you can always go back and check your... Uh, Check your video or check the pictures you've taken on your smartphone or on your digital camera. And you can say, oh, that's right, that went there, or so on. In this case, I've worked on the new reels before and uh, hope to work on many more of them to come. Although they're getting rarer and scarcer and they're becoming shelf sitters as people are starting to view these as treasures rather than something to be fished. And unfortunately, uh, taking them out of service and just making them a statement of art, which they are, uh, but I'd like to keep them going. I have one and I fish it. But, uh, don't hold any of them in uh, that high esteem. Okay, with that done, then we can put the star adjuster on. So the biggest problem with Newell reels these days, other than the drags, is parts availability. Uh, Carl Newell died, I forget exactly when. I, I, was, I know I was doing reels when he did. His wife took it over for a while there, and you could have you could get parts. And now the only place it seems to get parts is in the after uh, after market buying used uh, reels and paying extraordinary prices for them. And uh, that's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way you are now. So um, there wasn't that much of a part supply left, I guess. All right, that's the star adjuster. We'll give it a turn here to make sure that we're working the way we should. Make sure that the free spool is working. That, that's a whole lot quieter than when we started this exercise. All right, the silver so little nut that goes on side there is next. This is what I mean by that E-clip. It just gets in the way sometimes. 
but this came off without it. Okay, handle is up next. And that, that washer fits on the inside. There's an indentation here. A little plastic waterproof agent washer, what have you, is next. The silver cap goes on top. Just be careful as you're putting these these nuts and that back on. You don't want to cross strip these things. Uh, you cross strip this one, and uh, not only are you going to ruin a beautiful wheel, but you're not going to have an alternative in terms of putting it back. All right, here we go. Tighten that down. Crank it up. Oh, that's so much nicer. No whining, no complaining. And uh, we'll tighten the drag down here. Look at that ball bearing free spool. Can't even hear it. Can't even hear it. That's why these reels are as popular as they are. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that little introduction here to the Newell reel. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on the handle side there just because it's telling me to. And uh, that's it. That's your, uh, your Newell uh, fishing reel. If you wanted to, you have an adjustment on this one. Uh, you can back that bearing out a little bit if you want to get a little bit faster free spooling like this. That's a cast control. Uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, that's where you gain your sensitivity. And that's it. That's the C2295 Newell fishing reel. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you've learned something from it. And if you have one of these, I hope you, uh, you take care of it for years to come. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. That's what keeps us going. And with that, I'm going to wish you uh, a fine day and great fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.